Okay, to be honest, I don't really even want to post this. Since the last video we published, uh, which is probably going on two weeks now, I have been hard at work trying to figure out how to make this app come to life. And I've been reading your comments, I've been posting a little bit on Twitter about my building process, and, and the reason I don't want to post this video is because it's the first version is actually ready. It's on the App Store, it's on a test flight thing, which I, it's been a hard time I've been trying to figure out how to explain that and I can actually give it to people to give it to people watching uh, for users. So in this video, I'm just going to do a quick recap of what I've been doing for the past couple weeks, how I've changed up my building process, what I've learned about building mobile apps. And by the end of the video, you're going to find out how you can become one of my test users. So thanks for being here. Let's get into it. And so what I decided to do is I switched over my development to Claude. I think somebody in the YouTube comments had said something like, I don't know, Claude was the better coding model, uh, better than ChatGPT, and that in Cursor itself, before I was using, like, a, instead of selecting a specific model to use, I was just doing auto. And someone had mentioned in the YouTube comments that maybe that was a bad approach. So I don't know, I don't know how right that is. I'm sure there's people who've built amazing apps on auto mode, but I switched over to Cloud Force on it, and then I started using Cloud AI to help me prompt and put it into Cursor to help me build. And so what I wanted to show you here on this screen is how many super, super, super micro steps I actually took. And so I won't obviously show you these these entire threads. This isn't a video where you're gonna watch me code something or in each of these conversations are so many threads where I'm asking Claude to break down how to build a specific feature or explain something to me in really tiny micro steps so that I could take that prompt and put it into cursor and help me build a specific feature. And the reason that I have five of these is because some of these threads would get so long that the thread would start to get really laggy and ultimately not start to work. I think in this one, it's I hit a limit that said, yep, your conversation has reached the length limit. Try shortening it or starting a new one. And so, yeah, just to kind of take you through what I was doing, I would literally give cursor the log of my terminal of what it was kind of spitting out, put it in here. I would copy and paste everything in like my app.tsx file, which is where all the code lives. And I would say, okay, this is the code. Can you explain what might be going on? Explain what might be happening? And it would break it down for me. And it would give me the exact prompt to put into cursor. It would show me the issue. Sometimes I really would kind of, my head would start to hurt as I was like kind of trying to follow along. But yeah, that's that's the biggest thing I learned, especially as a beginner and especially for you beginners that are watching. It, it took me probably 10 times longer. I'm sure there's an easier way to do it. You know, since I started building this, like this thing called a cloud code came out, which apparently writes code for you without you even prompting it. And so it does feel like a little bit I'm in the stone ages of using cloud and cursor. But regardless, if you're starting at a place like me, I think the best thing you can do is to break it down into micro steps and keep telling Claude, hey, break this down into even more micro steps because I don't understand what's going on. I did feel like a little silly, like having to break down really basic things. But the more that I did that, the more confident I got in what I was doing. And honestly, the less things broke or if it did break, I was just going one step back to fix and not, you know, five or 10 or or really sometimes before I didn't, I didn't even know what broke. So that that's like my biggest piece of advice there. Okay. We're going to get to my app in just a second, um, but just to show you like where I was, just so you can understand a little bit of, you know, how I got here. So when I posted this a while back, I think my, the original idea I had for my app was the more I'm like, Oh my God, this is so dumb. But anyway, it's a step counting app. And I had this original idea of counting my daily steps, my weekly steps and my monthly steps. And that sounded all fine and good. And the secondary feature was to have this sort of like habit tracker grid where I would, over the course of a month, you could see whether you walked 10K more steps or not. And the idea was to like visualize over the course of a month how many steps you walked. And again, this all sounds like really awesome, but the biggest issue that I ran into, and I'm sure there's a workaround, and if you do know a workaround, leave it in the comments, was that syncing to in my case, Apple health data was just like really challenging. And so it could only sync really for the last seven days accurately. And then anything before that or anything beyond the seven day scope, it would really start to get wonky. 
And so what I eventually landed on was uh, like a weekly habit tracker. Uh, I don't, let me see if I could quickly find what this looked like. I ended up on a weekly habit tracker that looked something like this, where I had the big steps up top and then like a weekly view of whether or not I hit 10K or more steps. But the more I thought about that, the more I was like, I don't know, basically this acted more just like a checkbox than like a real app or than a real habit tracker that sort of looks backwards. And so I rearranged my app to become something a little bit different. And I, let me just walk you through this quick. This is a little boring, but you know, I had that idea and then I was like, okay, I want to change this. So I took a screenshot and said, I want to delete this. And then it gave me the step to delete that, which t took me to, you know, this step, you know, just did one thing, it deleted it. And then I wanted it to add an additional thing and then added that thing. And so you can see that I'm slowly like building out the features of this app, you know? And so again, back to the idea of building in micro steps, I think that's really important. And then, you know, the last thing I did is that I really chatted with Claude to like help it, help me ideate on what I was doing. I would explain the idea I had. I would kind of write it in plain language. And it did a really good job of like understanding what I was trying to do and building out the features for me. Okay, almost to the big reveal. So that feature was gone. I took this other, I posted this other photo just a couple of days ago saying like, you spent way too long vibe coding the most basic app in the world. And that's kind of where I'm at today is I kind of feel like this is so basic that I'm even scared to show it or display it. But I learned from a lot of people who have come on to Starter Story and all the entrepreneurs and people that I follow online. I think there's a saying like, if you're not embarrassed by the first version, you've launched too late. And yeah, so I kind of gave this update. I did another video update with a lot of good news and bad news, essentially saying that this is a slow version. I'm building the slow way. And, and today I'm finally ready to reveal that my app is actually in the App Store. It works, I've installed it on my phone, I'll show it to you here in a second, and I'll explain a little bit of a process that I, again, I just had Claude explain to me how to do it. I took screenshots of the image, it told me exactly what to click, and gave me descriptions. I've basically used AI to do this whole thing, which is so crazy, because I just would have never thought that I would get to a place where um, it could do it for me. Let me show you the app, uh, and, then I'll, and then I'll tell you a little bit about how you can how you can download it. So let me open up the terminal here, and I'll, let me open up first the iOS simulator. So this is cool, you know, I, Never in a million years would I have been able to just start this. And I'll probably fix these errors here. And it feels a little bit secondhand. So let me open up the simulator. It should open it up on this screen. Here we go. And here's the app in a second. And then let me just explain the features. Again, I feel so embarrassed even to be showing you this, but that's okay. It's okay that it sucks. And it's okay even if you don't want to use it. But the point is that it works for me. And I think it's pretty cool. Okay, and it looks so basic too. Okay, so as you saw there, there's a couple of things happening on the screen. I really simplified this. Like, I feel so embarrassed even like talking about it and having to like explain it. Right now it syncs with your iPhone. Uh, you just have to allow the steps to work. And up at the top, it accurately displays how many steps you've taken. I've tested it a couple times. And instead of sort of a habit tracker, I got this idea, a lot of people on X will do this, like uh, what their progress is towards like an ultimate goal. In his case, he's building towards a million ARR. A lot of people do this for, you know, for a lot of things that they're kind of gunning for. And I thought, okay, that could be cool on a daily basis to see what is my progress as I track towards 10K or more steps. And so when you open the app, let me close it and I'll open it again. When you open the app, what it'll do, it'll open up your step count at the top. And then this these little squares will sort of fill in depending on how many steps you've taken towards 10K. And so in this case, this is the example, this isn't real. Real steps is just a placeholder. I've only taken, or in this example, I've taken 5,432 steps. And these green boxes fill into the five because that's sort of the, the progress that I've made. And then at the bottom, it'll tell you how many steps you have left to hit 10K and a, just a slight encouraging message to say like almost there. And that's the app. So let me show you what it looks like on my phone, on my real phone here. Let me close this one. I can mirror my phone, forgive all my apps. So it's in test flight, it's actually working. When I click in, I have not taken a lot of steps today. I'm a little embarrassed. I've only taken 840, but you can see that it's working accurately because I haven't hit 1000. This is not green. And so it still tells me how many steps I have to go and almost there. And that's it. All right. If you made it to the end of this video, 
I want to invite you to be a test user of my app. So head to the form in the description. Uh, all I need is your name and your email. If you're one of the first hundred people to sign up, I'll send you an email and have you download and test my app. I'm really nervous, honestly, about putting this out there into the world. I don't think it's very good, uh, even though it's something that I, I think I would like and I think I would enjoy and use every day. Uh, it feels really nerve wracking to get feedback from real people like you, but that's the only way I'm ever going to know if it's worth anything. So once again, head to the form in the description to sign up to be a beta user for my app. And in the second link in the description, you're going to find a link to starter story build. That is our platform for helping beginners like me, maybe beginners like you learn how to use AI to actually build something that works. You can build a web app, you can build a mobile app, and I've used some of the things in there to honestly help me uh, build this app. So thanks for being here. Thanks for the support. And now the real work begins. All right. Talk to you next time. Peace.